I have these cards, here's my high cards. Let me put my low cards over here. I'm not going to put them in order. You can trust me that, that they're all there. So here, here's my low cards. And we could honestly take the ace out and compare five to five. But this is the majority of, of the cards in the deck. Now, if you want, you know, we could... I, I take the neutral cards out because they don't really have as much effect on the game uh, that these cards do. Uh, although they are better if they clump with high cards. But that aside, there's two cards missing. So effectively, if we put one with this one and the eight with the other one, let's see here if I have an eight, then we'd have a 50-50 chance of getting either high cards or low cards. But I'm going to remove these for now. Let's just talk about uh, low cards. For the most part, that won't break the dealer, and high cards, that will break the dealer. Okay. Now, we could take the aces out, because that's a wash, right? They run high and low. If we wanted to, notice that the six will break the dealer, or um, will, will function as a low card most of the time, but one time it will break the dealer. And the nine will function as a high card most of the time, breaking the dealer, but in one instance, it will not. Okay, so, so that's a wash there. But anyway, that, I digress. That's really not important. While each of the card may affect the hand a bit differently due to the underlying value here, the process of predict, prediction of cards is equal because the subsets contain the same number of members. In other words, this has six, six cards and so does this. Okay. As, as we said earlier, the optimum clumping frequency in the first base game is usually five or six cards long. It's a simple concept. We need to see runs of cards about five solid cards long on a consistent basis, more than what random math allows. Now, let me demonstrate. Let me just go back to the first base strategy that hopefully you watched the, the, uh, the, the, the video on. Okay. You need to see more than, in other words, let's say, for instance, you're playing a game, and I always say play, let's say we play in a four-player game. Okay and I deal those out, and you see this, okay, and then you see this, okay, and, and then we say, okay, here's one, two, three, four, five, okay, and then let's say this person hits, and then this happens, well, he wouldn't hit that, <laughs> this person hits, I'm sorry, and this person hits and they stand. Okay, so we saw five. Okay, five. That, so we're going to assume that maybe this, this, uh, this game has some, um, has some uh, possibility to be clumped. Now, if you were playing, and I relate it to Baccarat because we have a lot of Baccarat players. If you were playing Baccarat, you wouldn't base your decision that five in a row are the, are the most common thing ever right away. You would want to see more of them, just like in blackjack. Okay, so we saw one. Okay, so that's a good sign. Now, if we play a next round and the next round and the next round, and then we start to see it again, if they deal the cards again, and, and then maybe two or three rounds down the road, we, something, we see something like this again. Now we just saw it. Again, okay, that'd be like seeing two five in a rows in a game of Baccarat, okay? So we need to see it a little more than one time, and we need to see something else with first base, too. I'm just pick, pick this round up here. We should probably see this, too, just to confirm that the cards, the cards are clumped up a bit, okay? Now, what's important... When you're when you're playing with clump cards, just don't don't let that low ace fool you, which is what usually happens, okay? In a lot of these circumstances. Okay. So then you'll start to see clumps of low cards. Now again, if they get too long. That isn't a game you want to play. But if you consistent, consistently see five, six in a row, that happens more than once, and each round in between has clumps of low cards, then that's probably a game that's good at first base. Now, let me show you something that would disqualify it if you only saw high cards. 
you saw, okay, well, I saw high card clump. If you consistently see stuff like this, and this is what you must practice or must understand and get really efficient at when you're trying to play blackjack. This here is random. There's no identifiable pattern whatsoever. Okay. Now, when we see no identifiable pattern when we're playing blackjack, okay, our go-to system is basic strategy and card counting. Okay. And that's that's always going to be our go-to system, okay, all the time. Our, we have go-to systems in, in Baccarat. Okay, what's what's our go-to system? What what what's our go-to system in Baccarat? Oh, a lot of us just go play MDP, you know. But there's a lot of things you have to be careful of in blackjack. If the cards are random, you want to go to your go-to system, which is always basic strategy and card counting. However, you have to be careful in blackjack. It's a little bit more volatile when you go to the go-to system. If the cards are non-random and the clumps are too long consistently, time after time. You don't want to go to the go-to system. You simply want to leave the game. Okay? And that is the most important thing that you can do. Because if you start seeing this, okay, too many low card clumps and everybody hitting and getting low cards all the time, you don't want to go to your go-to system. Okay, you just simply want to leave the game. So if the clumps are too long, okay, you can't beat it. Is what I'm saying. Okay, there's no go-to system when the clumps are too long. The clumping frequency has to be usually below five or six. Okay, that's that's the first point. If it took me a little bit of time to get to that, that's what I was trying to point out. Okay, so you're looking for a game that is clumped that consistently has a clumping frequency of five or six high cards in a row, followed by some clumps of low cards, okay? That's the most important thing, okay? In Baccarat, we determine that these events are, are determined by some bias in the game. When, when the bias is composed of one in a row, two in a row, three in a row, these events occur at such a frequency that at times we're not sure if it's a bias or if, if it's just happened in randomly, right? We, we, we don't really know that when we look at a Baccarat game, but it doesn't really matter. If it continues, uh, it, it, and we're betting that way, that's great. M most occasion it doesn't matter, except for the fact that it, tends, it does tend to last longer. If there's some process flaw involved, such as the cards being shuffled to favor a particular side, banker or player, you know, due to the rules. When this occurs, it tends to be a bit more predictor and hold longer. In other words, if there's a reason that you're seeing ones, twos, and threes all the time and you're able to predict them, you know, who cares why? But if there is a reason behind it, it will tend to stay longer. In blackjack, this is the difference. We know for certain that processes in the game can cause clumping since it's not automated. Okay? We don't have quite, we have automation in, in Baccarat, obviously we do have Baccarat hand shuffle games, but everything now, everything is automatic in Baccarat, right? The, the dealer has certain rules all the time, they play the cards exactly the same way, the cards are, are uh, the procedure for, for putting the cards in the shoes is the same, the shuffle is the same, they put them in the shuffle machine most of the time. Everything is the same. There's no card pickup procedure, there's nothing the player can do once the bet's made. But in blackjack this isn't the case. The process that allows this to occur is the card pickups. In other words, what causes clumping? The fact that they pick up the break cards, the hand shuffle, and when they shuffle, what do they do? Okay, how many times do they shuffle the cards in blackjack? Okay, well, generally they have a big stack of cards, and we'll say this is eight decks, and they do this. They put the stack here, right? Just for, and they <clears throat> they split it in half, and then they take picks off each, and. Assume this was like eight decks. Then they go through this here. And they do that. Then they do this, right? Okay. We'll say that was six or eight decks. Then they split it in half again. And then they simply do a straight shuffle, straight through. Okay. So effectively, you have shuffled the cards 
two times. That's it. You've shuffled the cards two times. Okay. So that's one of the things that doesn't break up the sorting of the cards by, by picking up breaking hands. Okay. So if you look at breaking hands, okay, let, let, I guess I should expound upon that a little bit. If we look at hands that break, let, let's say, for instance, that we have this. And I, I'm not doing multiple hands here. I'm just, just for example purposes. If you look at hands that break, okay, this, this person has eight. Let's say, for instance, you'll see this a lot. He hits it with a five, and then what happens? Breaks with a ten. If they can set that bias up, they just put together three low cards and one high card, okay? Now, if first base is this, I should have, probably should have put that up. This guy had blackjack. Well, let's not do blackjack because that, that would improve my case. Let's say, for instance, first base had that. And you'll see this. Pat hands are mostly what? Two card hands. So we pick these up, okay? And guess what goes on top here? This last card. If you watch, that's usually what they do. They pick up these three cards, first three cards of the hand, and then this last card, the last card that they hit with, goes on top. Okay, so they do that, and then they put, put them in the discard tray, and I'll put the discard tray here. Then what do they do? Then they play out the rest. Of, well, if someone breaks before, they continue to do the same thing. And then they turn this over, right? Now what do they do? They take these cards, and they put them on top, right? So now, when you look at these cards in the discard tray, you've sorted the high cards, and you've sorted the low cards. Now, this is a tendency, obviously. It, is, it doesn't always happen exactly like this, but you can see this is, this is the effect that they actually want. This is what they're going for right here. Because okay? they know how you're going to play when you walk into the casino. Okay? They know you're going to play basic strategy. And if they can get the cards sorted like this, they're going to beat you every time. Okay, okay so that's, that's how the card pickup procedure um, helps clumping. The hand shuffle only two or three times. Okay, the fact that most players play basic strategy also clumps the cards. Okay, let, let me show you how that works. Okay, so let's say for instance, especially, let's say for instance they deal out of this low card clump here. Okay. All right. This person's going to hit. Let's say the low card clump continues. This person's going to hit. Okay. When you get 11, then he, well, he, he can't double, but he hit it again because he can't break, right? Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Just so it's not overly exaggerated. Okay. So now, this person doubled. Okay. Got a low card. Low card clump. This person hit till he hit till he had a hard total. This person's going to stand. They know they're going to stand. And this person has, or the dealer has, a soft 17. In some cases, they'd, uh, uh, they'd hit. In some, some, some rules, they wouldn't. But what do they do then? They're going to take these, and they're going to take these, and they're going to take these, and then they're going to sweep these and put them right on top. Okay, so then what did they do? They created a round of cards. Remember, this is a low ace. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards, of which one of them is a ten, and they put them in the discard tray. And remember the other the other stack that we had. Then what do they do? They take that and they put this right on top of that. Okay. Now, if they don't break up this clump in two shuffles, this is what's going to happen to you. Okay, what's he going to do? Well, he's going to hit, he's going to break, right? Then they'll turn this over and do that. Now, he could have hit it again, too, okay? So as long as they clump these cards up, it's going to beat the basic strategy player, okay? So basic strategy itself, okay, played traditionally, helps clump the cards also because of standing hands and hitting hands and how it actually sorts the cards, okay? The other thing, too, is the casino tactic of 
trying to keep the low stakes tables full. Okay, so, so what does all this information afford us? We, we assume that the game is non-random sometimes. Now, the mistake that we sometimes make in Baccarat and in Blackjack, and especially in the early 90s, was that we assumed every game has predictability, every game is, is non-random, and we can beat every game. Okay, That's a fatal flaw. Okay, But you need to approach Blackjack exactly how you approach Baccarat, looking for things that reoccur. Okay, And when they first started dealing in the uh, late 80s and early 90s, it was evidence, and I, as I mentioned, Ken Houston said he used to see the box order of cards. Well, it's not quite that bad anymore, but what happened is they want to keep clumping okay, at a certain point, but they're still vulnerable, but it takes a little bit to actually see it, and being a Baccarat player, you will see it a lot more faster than the average blackjack player, okay? Trust me, because you'll start to see things like this probably and and the blackjack player won't okay so here's a round okay now now watch suppose you see this again now th this is an exaggerated example but this is what you must look for okay Hey, breaks. They're going to pick that up. But I'm going to leave it lay just so you see. Okay? Nine. Okay? And then breaks with that. Let's say he hit. Okay? Sixteen. He'll hit. Then this. Then this. Then this. Okay? Here's the clumping frequency in this game. And, and again, you would need just a little, watch a couple more rounds to confirm this, okay, before you start betting more money that this is going to occur. And you use it at, at, at third base, okay, to predict your hit cards and when not to double and when to double. But if we look at the sequential order of the cards, okay, you can see here that here were four high cards. Then there were four, four or five low cards. Here was the second card that we put on the table, right? Hope I don't screw this up. Okay. Then the first base player hit, 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 hit. Then he turned over his whole card, hit, hit. Hit. I'm gonna tell you if I'm if I'm if I'm getting this next card, I ain't betting it's gonna be a ten. Okay. Now this is an extreme example. Okay, four four high cards and four low cards and four high cards and three low cards. But this is what we've learned to come to see in baccarat. Four in a row. Four in a row. Four in a row. However you want to think of this predictability. Is, is, is exactly the same thing in blackjack. Okay? There's a predictable pattern that is buried beneath what looks to be random, what looks to be just a normal game. Okay? And this is what happens. This clumping has become very strategic on their part where you can see high cards and low card patterns that will repeat because they don't get broken up by the shuffle. It, it got a lot less obvious because they're not as long, but they do exist, okay? So these are, the, these are the things you need to watch for in the blackjack game when you're playing third base and trying to get the clumping frequency. Obviously, the clumping frequency of high cards in this game would be four. The clumping frequency of low cards in this game would be about four. There's one other thing that I want to tell you about clumping frequency. Okay. First of all, they're not, they're not dirty clumps either. There wasn't any other neutral cards in them. There wasn't high cards mixed in or anything like that. There's one other kind that you see, and if you play enough blackjack, you'll see this. Okay, You'll see this quite a bit. Um, let 
these cards. Ace, deuce, and ten. Okay. You want to watch out for those clumping together. You know, I've never been able to prove why it happens, but in some games, you will see it as plain as day why twos go to three or for whatever reason, we don't know, okay? But you see this. I think some, somehow it has to do with a 12 and then getting hit. I, I honestly don't know, but I have seen this for 40 years, okay? That's the other thing you want to watch, and I'm going to tip you off to one more thing that I want you to watch. Is this happening all the time? You're hitting a 12 and it's breaking all the time. It's usually set up by a strip shuffle, um, I think most of the times. And every time you see hit a 12 in a game, it breaks. Okay, you, It usually is in a game like this, and, and hopefully it isn't a game um, that you play much. You, you want to watch for things like this, because when they get this clumping frequency down pat, okay, this is what they're trying to, to get to. Okay. Oh, then we'll make it the worst case scenario, okay? This is what they're trying to get to. And then what happens in this scenario, I'll show you, and you, you can probably relate to this. That's what happens. So that's what we're looking for, the clumping frequency of the cards, okay? Now, does it matter that four is a bad number? No, it not necessarily is if you know how to play it, okay? But this, there is a specific way that the cards clump that's going to set up everyone getting a stiff hand and then hitting it with a 10. Okay? They set up the break, as we used to call it in the 90s, they set up the break card clump perfect. Okay? Because everyone, they know how you're going to play. They know you're going to play this way. If you have a, a high card up and the stiff hand, everyone is going to hit. And when they get the cards to this condition, they just start breaking everyone out. How do you counteract this? Well, that's what we'll talk about in card play and whatnot. But, so, the thing that you want to watch for is the clumping frequency. Is in, in tens, is it four tens? Four high cards, I guess I should say. Is it generally four high cards? Sometimes it's three. These are the most common, okay? Three followed by a neutral card. Okay. Okay. And, and patterns and clumps can start with neutral cards. Do they start with neutral cards? That's one thing you want to watch. Or do they start with low cards? Are they surrounded like this? Okay. Or do you see this? And, and this is certainly probable and happens an awful lot. But with something like this, two, one, two, one, two, one, okay. This, this can certainly happen random as two, one, two, one, two, one can happen in, in a Baccarat game, okay. But if this goes on for a long time, you can start betting that, that it's going to continue. That the shuffle, the intertwine has set this up almost perfect, okay. Now when this happens, you can really exploit this stuff and you'll see it. Now again, some of the more common ones like 2 1 2 1 2 1 um, or ace deuce 10 you have to qualify a little bit better I'd be usually playing two shoes on it before I'd say okay this is a valid pattern that I'm seeing in this deck of cards all night and it, it has to be a hand shuffled if they're sticking it in a machine I, I very seldom see things uh, continue okay so this is one thing that you want to watch for you know effectively what I'm telling you with clumping frequency is that any viable pattern or any statistic that you kept in Baccarat, when we shuffle two, two sets of cards together, the same thing can occur when they're not randomly mixed up again in any game. And this is what's happened in Blackjack, okay? Only it favors the dealer when it happens because people play basic strategy. So that's the lesson of clumping frequency. Watch for patterns in cards, high cards, low cards particularly, that reoccur all the time. And, and if, you, if you listen to some of the theories of shuffle tracking, that's exactly what they did. They would look for patterns in the cards to reoccur. But 
the thing that that got them got them in trouble is they were looking for specific cards. They didn't sort the cards into high cards, high cards and low cards as it, as it affects the game. They were looking for certain patterns. And what what is confusing is that the ace is played high and low, so it's going to run with with high and low cards. It's picked up as a one in a low card clump and put in the discard tray, and it's picked up with a high card in a blackjack. Okay, so those are things with clumping frequency that you want to remember. From first base, it's about five or six long. That really, you see this a couple times in a shoe. That's a good first base game, or even a nine in there, obviously. Anything like that is good for first base. But it has to happen more than once. It has to have some predictability for it. You can't see it one time and then go, okay, it's clumped up here. Because this can happen randomly. When you see this happen, that's the most important. I can't stress that enough. The most important thing is, is that you see the pattern or the clump of cards more than once. Just like how we look at it in Baccarat. Remember the rule. We want to see it first. Okay. We want to see it first, and we want to see it again. Okay, now we got it. Now, the beauty of blackjack is the procedure is such that it's not going to destroy it, shoe after shoe, as long as they're using the same decks, okay, and they're doing the same thing, okay? Now, I, I want to tell you about some things that actually may happen, and then we'll get into card play. But I think you understand clumping frequency. We can ask questions underneath this. Um, it's very important, again, to make sure you see it first and not read things in. We as human beings are always looking for, for patterns in everything, okay? So sometimes we see patterns when patterns effectively don't exist. So if it's random, go ahead and just play basic strategy and card counting, okay? If it's not random, then look for those patterns first, okay? And we'll talk about how to bet and how to play from third base, um, you know, in the next video or two, okay? But one of the things you want to watch for, and, and when you play blackjack, if you play an awful lot then, and I hope you do because it is, a, it is a good game and you can get a real good advantage at it. And it's starting to play a lot better now that they eliminated a lot of the seven-player game, player games. Eight players actually with the dealer, those games are gone. Uh, so, so it's less crowded, which clumps it up more and puts it right at that real nice sweet spot. Uh, they do have knockout dealers in blackjack, okay, and you will get, I used to get an awful lot of heat. I'd be playing third base, third base in Atlantic City at the Taj uh, when we were playing an awful lot, and the pit boss would plant himself right next to me and not say a word, okay. So, one of the things you want to look for, and I've learned this over the years too, is sometimes if they stack up the cards, okay, and when I was playing... All of a sudden, it, the cards would get would get knocked down all over the place. Um, and what they're trying to do is destroy the bias. Because once you read the bias, and it's and it's not overly clumped, it's easy to beat the game. It's it's just it's unbelievably easy because you, you have you have the key to the to the safe. You'll they'll, they'll know you know. Okay, and I don't know at what level they know, but someone's watching it. You'll see the impossible things happen all the time then. Dealers will stack up cards. They knock them over. They fall on the floor. And three, th one night, three times, the d different dealers knock cards over where I was playing in the late city. Okay? The other thing to watch for is, since it's the shuffle that doesn't destroy it, when you see somebody taking particular attention, they usually bring in a new dealer. And when they, and I told you this before, when they get an almost perfect pharaoh shuffle, uh, now it's not a pharaoh shuffle when they do it like that, but when they get a tight intertwine, a tight intertwine, and they start taking smaller picks like that, and it'll happen to you. When they start taking smaller picks, they're trying to ruin your game. Okay. Trust me on that one. Okay. So, that's the clumping frequency. It's the same as Baccarat. Look for patterns in the cards. Only segregate them in high cards and low cards. Make sure ace eight. Ace runs with high, runs with low. Look for clumping frequency of five, clumping frequency of six. Okay, look for two, two highs, a low, two highs, a low, two highs, a low. Anything like that. Keep your eye on what deuces do, running with ace and deuce. And the, the key to the game, too, is watch how the 12s are playing. Okay, um, So that's about it.
okay, for this one. Now we'll get into some, some card play and how to alter basic strategy. Oh, and remember, basic strategy is your go-to, but if it's overly clumped, don't go to the go-to system. Leave the game. Okay, it's Keith here from uh, Beat the Casino. Hope you enjoy our blackjack and hope we get some real good professional blackjack players uh, to go ahead and get out there and play and uh, you know make this the best blackjack forum on the internet also. All right, thanks a lot.